Hello and welcome to the inaugural edition of the Running with Dave podcast. I'm your host, David Jankowski, uh, here to share some running tips, tricks, and training advice from a former professional athlete as well as a uh, former college and high school coach. Um, as I said, this is the uh, inaugural edition of uh, my running podcast. Uh, so hopefully over the course of these podcasts, we'll be able to cover a variety of topics that'll be helpful for all levels of, of athletes or even people who are just uh, interested in running as a sport. Uh, hopefully we'll cover some some topics that cover a pretty wide array of things, uh, just to give you a, a flavor. Uh, some of the things we're thinking about are uh, just basic uh, training physiology types of things, how to get running, uh, how to get better, um, those things that help anyone from a beginner to pretty advanced. So somebody who's looking to just get out and get a little bit more fit all the way up to somebody who may be trying to qualify for Boston or maybe even the Olympic trials for that matter. There'll be things that are uh, useful and at least interesting to people in all those categories. Um, equally, I'd like to cover yeah, maybe some experiential things, maybe what it's like uh, to go through the college recruiting process. Uh, how do you best position yourself as a high school athlete to get into college? Maybe talk to some current coaches and and talk about their thoughts on how kids can uh, best position themselves for a scholarship. Uh, also, too, talking to some uh, current and former professional athletes and their experiences uh, and pulling from there some training advice uh, that they think is important. Uh, and one thing that I really like to emphasize, it's kind of a project of mine and something that I think was a, a big benefit to me as an athlete was uh, the training and brain aspect, so the sports psychology side of things. I think uh, the brain, unfortunately, is often uh, underappreciated in, in athletic endeavors, and I think that that really sets a good athlete from a great athlete uh, apart. Uh, so it, it can really change the way in which uh, you're able to put yourself out there on race day. Uh, on competition days, and to, for that matter, on day-to-day -day training. So that gives at least a, a general flavor of some of the things that I hope to do with this podcast. We'll kind of see how it goes as we evolve. Like I said, this is my inaugural podcast again, so uh, forgive me if the audio is bad. I haven't invested in any uh, high-tech recording uh, equipment. I'm trying to kind of just uh, feeling this out uh, and getting my feet wet uh, and seeing where things go. Uh, if we get up to uh, a reasonable amount of followers, I haven't decided what the heck that is yet, um, then maybe we'll invest in some better equipment. But for now, hopefully you can uh, you can suffer along with me with some of the funny feedback and things that we'll get from, from this recording method. Um, but yeah, from there, maybe we'll just jump into things. Uh, you know, I think one of the, the first places to start and probably best place to start with a, the podcast on running is really the the question you get most often, no matter who you're, who you're talking to, it's, uh, how do I get better at running? Right. Um, I, I, I get that very often as a, when people find out I'm a, I used to run professionally, uh, friends who are just getting into running or, or trying to train for something specific. That'd be one of the things I ask. And even to, uh, while I was working at different running stores or as a coach, that's hey, coach, how can I get better? How, you know, how, how can I get to this level? How can I achieve this goal? Um, and so I've, I've put a lot of time into thinking about, you know, what are the components that really can make you a, a, a better runner and some of the quick fixes and things like that. that. Unfortunately, none of it, none of it with running is quick. And I think that's what draws a lot of us to running in the first place is the fact that it's, it's really, uh, building up of a lot of work over time and seeing the outcomes of all that hard work put, uh, put in place, uh, in one moment, just captured, right? That's what the race is for, is for you to capture all that hard work on one day and, and celebrate that right there. Um, so I think that's, that's the most profound thing about running that we have going for us. But how do you make sure that process is right? And how do you improve that process so that when you get the race that you're just better? Um, and I think really it, it's it's pretty simple what it starts with. And, and I think people get frustrated with this answer oftentimes, but I I do think it really does boil down to this, which is just run more. Um, and what I mean by run more, because that does need to be unpacked, and it is a multifaceted answer despite how simple it sounds, um, is it's it's really about duration. It's about time on the feet and miles in the bank. Um, 
the more you can be out and running on your feet, the stronger your body's going to be. The more you're going to adapt uh, your body to endurance running. Uh, those, those form uh, inadequacies that you have, uh, oftentimes just by running more miles and longer duration runs, uh, you can help fix a lot of those weaknesses because your body will adapt to the, the mileage and the strain that you're putting on it. Uh, now that, of course, comes with a caveat because you can't just run indefinitely more. Uh, you can't continually add every week X amount of minutes or X amount of miles to your run. Uh, that would be uh, obscene. And there will be a point where your body hits its sweet spot and you can't go beyond that without really risking a lot of injury. Um, and so there are two pieces there. How quickly can I move up in mileage? Uh, and then two, what, what paces should I be running at? Should it just be faster or should it be longer duration? Uh, we'll start with the second part of that question because I think that's probably the most important part as people are getting running is, uh, you know, what speeds, how should I be running? What should it feel like when I'm moving? Um, I think that's something even shoot, even people at, a, at very high levels, collegiate levels struggle with. I know I, I ran myself into the ground many times by running way too hard. So, uh, that should be a glimpse at what you should be doing, which is running a comfortable and controlled pace on most of your runs. Know the purpose of each run that you're going out to do. And then make sure that you're achieving that purpose. And for these types of things that I'm talking about, where it's just run more, it's really about miles. Maintenance miles is what we could call them. Where you're getting out at a comfortable pace. Uh, some people would say a pace where you can talk while you're running a talking pace. Um, some people use their, their heart rate or BPM uh, to, to gauge they're in that right zone, somewhere between, you know, it, it depends on the person, so I'm, I'm kind of reluctant to give heart rates, but 115 maybe and, and one, 145. Um, but again, it really depends on the person. If you're a heart rate person, you should kind of know what's pretty comfortable. I think it's easier to go based off the feel more so. And as a runner, you should be able to get uh, into that mode where you can really feel your body and understand what your body's telling you. And so I think that's, a, that's an important um, muscle to develop too. Um, so I, I like to do it more off that comfort level rather than BPM. Um, but that talking pace, that comfortable pace where you feel like you can just kind of cruise and you could go a couple miles further than you went or maybe just a mile further than you went if you had to. Um, not that you would necessarily push that far. So uh, that's one thing that you can really think about is that really controlled pace where you can just kind of cruise it out and get it done. And you might be huffing and puffing. And it might, it might, it might not be that much fun. And when you're talking, you're going to be breathing heavy between, between, uh, your sentences, but, uh, that's okay. Um, that's kind of the, the sweet spot zone that you want to be in for that, that additional mileage. Um, if you're not up to where you can really do sustained runs for, you know, more than half a mile or things like that, and you're really trying to look at that side of things, uh, don't feel bad about walking a little bit in the middle of your run. Uh, there's a method by Jeff Galloway, a uh, run-walk program. Uh, it's interesting. We used to call him the penguin for because he waddles, uh, but he's a former Olympian, so uh, shouldn't be making fun of him too much. But um, so the, the Jeff Galloway model, you could look at where you're just run maybe three minutes, jogging three minutes, and then you walk for a minute and jog three minutes and walk for a minute and so on. And you can kind of play with the times in there that, that make you feel comfortable. And I wouldn't get too rigid about it. Um, really kind of allow your body to play uh, and learn your body as you're doing those sorts of things as you're building up mileage. Uh, but those are, those are some of the good like preliminary things that you should think about when you're really trying to, to run more and build up that, that mileage. Like I said, that's one of the things that'll help everybody immensely. Um, and the other side of that is, of course, like I said, um, not just uh, speed and how fast you're going, how comfortable you are, but how fast can I build up? And that answer really boils down to where where am I right now? It's a good it's a good time to be working with a coach to really be able to figure that out more exactly. Um, a good rule of thumb as you climb in mileage, really, if you're over 50 miles a week, is about 10% per week is what you should be adding uh, as a max. Uh, so again, so if that's, you're running 50 miles a week, you could add 10% of that, which is five miles. So the next week you could be at 55, the week after that about 60, the week after that 66. Um, 
and so on. And you could climb, kind of climb that way. If you're below that, if you're more 20 miles a week, 30 miles a week, you could probably add close to five miles a week and be okay with that. That's, that's not too big a deal. Um, I think that might be a good way to think of it is just to start at five miles a week as, as the, a good safe adding uh, percentage. Uh, feel that out for a few weeks. Uh, and then, uh, again, it, it really does come down to feeling your body out, like just like for pace, uh, feeling your mileage increase and seeing what your body is capable of taking on and then kind of cruising it out at that mileage for maybe a week or two before you move up again. Sometimes that might mean that you have to go take a down week uh, to be able to go back up. Uh, one way that I like to, to put it together, uh, partially because uh, a lot of studies will show that the, 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 how the body adapts uh, works in kind of cycles of four weeks, uh, really three to four weeks. Um, so you'd go up three and then down one, up three, down one, or up four, down one is how you could do it too. Uh, those are the, the two models I tend to use with, with my athletes. It allows your body to, to take that week to, to recover and kind of soak up all that, that, that new mileage and new work that you've put in. Uh, but at the same time to continually be, uh, building, expanding on what you've been uh, doing in the past to make yourself a little bit better. Uh, so th hopefully that, that kind of boils down to the best way you can get better as a runner. Uh, so again, those points mainly being just shoot, run more, get out there, lace up those sneakers, get out and go run a couple miles. Uh, it's really about miles in the bank and time on the feet. And those are the things that are going to get you stronger and faster uh, and really able to compete more and shoot. Actually, that's a great way to increase your kick too. If maybe we'll get into that in a later episode, but, uh, really improving your kick starts with just having that endurance base. And that all comes from getting in those miles. So I really encourage you to get out, get some miles, run them at a comfortable pace, find a buddy who's uh, similar fitness to you, talk with him or her, uh, make sure you guys can talk comfortably on the run. Don't get too worried about how, how, if you're going too fast, if you're not sure if you're going fast enough, slow down. That's uh, one thing one of my college coaches used to tell me. I think it's great advice, especially for someone like me who used to always try to lean into it, push the pace. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we all want instant solutions. We always want quick fixes. And you think if you push it real hard, you're going to you'll get there faster. But a lot of times you break yourself down. So don't get too wrapped up in how fast you're going in the sense of, am I going fast enough? Better to be on the backside of that calm, cool, relaxed, knock out those miles, get them in, feel good about it, uh, and have yourself a stretch after the run. And then to uh, just be intentional about how you're increasing your miles. Uh, don't be going you know, crazy. I'm running 10 miles a week. Next week, I'm going to run 50. Uh, it's a good, good way to get yourself injured, but um, be intentional. Think maybe, you know, I'm running 10 miles a week. Maybe I can get to 15 next week uh, and slow progress like that. Uh, I certainly would encourage you if you're looking to increase miles to start working with a coach. If you don't have one already, consult your coach um, just to get a sense of what they're thinking because they know you and they know a bit of your running history uh, to help you kind of improve and continue to, to make progress without jumping into something too quickly and getting injured. Uh, so hopefully that's a good uh, inaugural podcast. Uh, you enjoyed it. And uh, you come back and listen to more. So thank you for joining us at the uh, Running with Dave podcast. Uh, again, I'm your host, David Jankowski, and uh, we'll see you next time.